Hello ladies, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to a moment with the ladies. I am popping on just a little bit early today. So come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As I often say on this wonderful, beautiful Wednesday afternoon, it is time for a moment with the ladies as we are discovering our purpose and our power as women. So definitely do me a favor as you're coming on, make sure that you tag someone, make sure that you let them know that a moment with the ladies is on today. Say, Pastor Nisha's on earlier. We're learning our purpose and power as a woman. Um, and then also do me a favor on Facebook, as I often say, welcome on Facebook. Love you so much. So happy that you're joining us. Do me a favor. Make sure that you like it. Make sure that you love it. Make sure that you share it. Get the word out that a moment with the ladies is on today. And then, of course, if you're on YouTube, welcome on YouTube. So happy that you are on YouTube with us today. Um, I am Nidra Hawkins. I am married to my phenomenal, amazing, so wonderful husband, Pastor John Hawkins. We're the pastors of the Living Water Church. We are located currently in Severn, Maryland. If you've never been out, we'd love to have you and be a part of it. In the meantime, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Um, so that you can continue to be just connected in what we're doing here um, in the Living Water Church. And again, if you're on Facebook, love you so much. I'm just getting my thing together over here. Um, so happy that you're on with us today. Make sure that you like it. Make sure that you love it. Make sure that you share it and get the word out that A Moment with the Ladies is on today. Um, and I am on a little bit earlier today. Um, so if you happen to be watching the replay today, just simply hit replay um, so that I can see who is on today. So I'm just going to hop right into it today when it comes to being a woman. And if you are connected, you follow the ministry at all. Pastor John talked about love today. And I was just so elated. I, I heard some of what he, he taught. I was out doing some things, but I heard some of what he was teaching on love. And I said, wow, this is so, it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit works um, and how he really is trying to convey something to his people. Um, and just to recap a few things when it comes to um, who we are as women, who we are as women, as you know, we are made with a specific design, with a specific purpose that God made us with intent, that it wasn't just where God just threw us here on the earth and then all of a sudden we had to figure life out. God made you to fulfill something. He made you with purpose. He had an idea in mind. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you and that all of these things are good thoughts that it's going to bring you to an expected end. So when God made the woman, when he made you, he had such a beautiful purpose in mind. And just again, recapping a few things um, when it comes to being a woman that we are designed to help by nature. Um, that's why many times people are wanting to help. They're wanting to assist. They feel like they have plans, all of those things. That's a part of your nature. God created you that way. Um, and we learn by definition that a woman, by her characteristics, by her God-given makeup, we are to provide solutions. We're to be nurturing. We're to be loving, very caring, very soft, very mild. This is actually all definitions of what a woman is. What a woman is. And the reason why this is so critical, ladies, is because in order for us to fully be all that God has called us to be, to find true fulfillment is fulfilling the, the God-given design purpose of what God has called us to be. Anything outside of that, honestly, is going to lead to frustration, is going to lead to confusion. You're going to feel like, why in the world, you know, am, am I struggling in certain areas? Is because when you are not playing your role, playing your position in what God has designed you to be, it can be frustrating. And you have to remember, and we're just recapping a few ideas, is that when God made you for something, he knows exactly what he's doing. So anytime you try to go against that, <laughs> you try to fight it, you try to figure out, you know, how other things are going to work, or maybe I need to try something else, or maybe I need to be something else, or maybe I need to, you know, assume a different position in life. No, it's not going to work because God knows what he's doing. And we have to trust that he knows what he's doing, that he loves us so much. And that when he made us as a woman, he knew the plans, he knew the purposes that he meant for you when he put you here on this earth. So our journey. Hi, Miss Michelle. Welcome. Good afternoon, Erica. Love you so much. Love you all so much on YouTube. Glad that you're on. Again, as you're on, make sure that you like it, love it, share it, all those wonderful things. 
So when God made you, he loved you enough that he put you on here to help dominate, to have authority, to take dominion, to be fruitful, to multiply all of these wonderful things that we discover in the book of Genesis from the beginning. And what we have been discovering this, these past few days is that many times when you are on this purposeful, like being inten intentional about being who you are as a woman, sometimes Satan will challenge you in those areas by opposing you when it comes to people's opinions, uh, opposing you when it comes to society, opposing you when it comes to just so many things. And it didn't just happen in 2024. We see this with Eve from the very beginning. Eve was in a position of where she everything was good she was playing her role she was in her god-given design she and adam in the garden were perfectly fine and then all of a sudden she's left to herself you know and out doing her thing being curious about things that she wasn't supposed to be curious about and of course satan comes and we know that story i don't have time to go over that i wanted you to see that because one point that we have to keep reiterating over and over again is that when you discover your design as a woman, you have to rest in that place. You have to be secure in that place. You don't want to challenge it. You don't want to fight it. And, you know, I mentioned yesterday that someone came to me on Sunday and said, Pastor Nidra, when you said the fight is over, can you help me with that? And I get it. I understand the challenge because we have been so patterned, so, um, uh, bra I say brainwashed, but we have been so engraved and engulfed in this society, especially in America, where we are women who own businesses, we get an education, you know, many times we've had to do things on our own, all of those different things, and I won't go back into the history of where the feminist movement started. So if you've been engulfed in that for years upon years upon years, and then you come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you accept him. You've received him as your Lord and Savior. You're now a new creation in Christ. So now you're on this new discovery of who you are as a woman. And it can be challenging because you're going to have to take all of this knowledge, all of this wonderful insight that the Holy Spirit is allowing us to see who we are as a woman and is combating every single thing that you have lived with for years. But thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost and thank God for his word that comes and sheds light in those ignorant places. The light of God's word, the light of his truth comes and it opens the eyes of our understanding, allowing us to see the things that we have lived with and have been so comfortable with for so long, in many regards, is not God, was not God's design for women. It was not his intent. It was not the role we should be playing in our homes, in society, with our children, just the, the list goes on and on. But I'm so grateful that you're on here and that I'm learning these things because it's helping us grow and truly be the woman that God has called us to be. And I'm thankful because I'm, I'm happy for even for myself, I'm seeing areas in my life by studying the word of God, reading this book that are definitely challenging things that have just been sitting there for years. Not even necessarily that it's that I am woman, hear me roar, but maybe certain attitudes certain dispositions towards society or life or just as a woman you just kind of exist and walk through life and never really being challenged but i'm grateful for this because as you know the story and many of you have that story as well where you you want to be the woman god has called you to be you want to be you know everything that you see when you you sit and you dream and you think about the desires that god has put in your heart you know you see it and so now we're on this wonderful journey of discovering it and i'm grateful because the Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our pathway. So the word of God comes in our life and it allows us to see clearly the steps to take, how to be that woman, how to play my role, how to play my position, and even understanding the power that God has given me as a woman. And just to, to, to bring us on the same page as we go in this is that even yesterday we talked about when it comes to the woman's body. We talked about how we have so many purposes. We talked about uh, being a helpmate, offering solutions. And the woman's body, we talked about that it's actually designed for a purpose, not for the misuse and abuse that maybe people have experienced before in their past, but that God even designed the body, the female body, for his purpose, for his use. So we have to discover this more and more, especially for those of us that have any kind of influence with younger girls, um, or we're raising daughters, even when it comes to our sons, 
that we are training them and teaching them the word of God, that, like we read yesterday in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. And when you think about that, that the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us, then you're not just going to dress it anyway, say anything out of your mouth, just go anywhere. Your body is fully yielded. You're learning to become, all of us, fully yielded to what the Holy Ghost is calling us to do. And that's the purpose, one of the purposes of the female body. And we're going to continue on in this teaching more and more about the design. But today, ladies, today I want to talk about love. And this when I, when I was studying this, like literally, I got so overwhelmed because I was thinking to myself, like, we, we have been focusing on a lot of things when it comes to being a female. We know the role, you know, whether it's a wife, we bear children, we have grandchildren, we are aunties, we might be cousins, best friends, teachers, lawyers, business owners. We all play some kind of role, and many times we are on that discovery we're on that journey which is a part of it we want to know what is our role what is my place what is my position but as i'm reading and discovering what the holy spirit is showing us one of the greatest things let me read this to you one of the greatest things that we have to have to remember number one and i said this before but just to recap before we get into this love is that our number one responsibility is to know our place in god our number one one of our number one responsibilities is to know our place in God. And when we know our place in God, you hear Pastor John keep encouraging us and reminding us, make sure that you're studying your Bible consistent, consistently, making it a priority to spend time with God. And honestly, ladies, that is going to be the key to our success as women. That is going to be our number one key to success of being the woman that God has called you to be. We can't get around it. We can't try to maneuver it and do all these different things. Our number one responsibility is to know our place in God. And I won't go back and try to reteach um, some of the things that we've already gone over, both my husband and I. But it's so important to keep that at the forefront of your mind because this society that we live in, we have to be careful that we're protecting ourselves from those things that would try to get it out of order. Where society will tell you, no girl, go after that money. Or no, chase that relationship. Go get that man. Or you need to raise your children this way. Don't listen to what other people tell you. Not, not even based on the word of God. This is just what society is telling you. Go get those things. Go um, all of these things. Go experience this. Go experience, the, go experience that. But who is telling you that this is our number one responsibility is to know our place in God. So that's why we're on here so that we can discover that all of the sanity that we're looking for, all of the peace that we're desiring, all of the, the regulation of the hormones, all of that comes from knowing our place in God, spending time with him, having devotion, living a life uh, for him. And that leads me into this next point because we've learned a lot about being a helpmeet. We learned a lot about being a woman. We've learned a lot about, you know, our nature as being soft and mild, but it doesn't end. We're continuing on in this. But I was so like stuck in, in a good way when I was reading this and discovering that one of our purposes as a woman is to love God. Now, I know we've heard that before. We've, we've heard it before. And I've heard many things growing up in the church about how you're designed to worship. But when I studied this and I looked at this and I said, wow, we were actually designed to love God. Now, listen to some of these points. God desired to create females and, I'm, and it's mankind. We know it's male and female, but I'm on a moment with the ladies. So we're going to say females, the woman to have fellowship with him and to love him. That's a part of our creation to love him. Think about that. Imagine a mom who's having a, a, a who has a baby and her number one desire is just to love her child like that is her number one focus. Wow, I cannot wait to have children, you know, so I can just love on them and kiss on them and just hug them and, you know, just tell them how beautiful they are that and that's us as 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 moms as 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 women. But God, who is the creator of the heavens and earth, the creator of the universe He's saying, I'm creating mankind so they can love me. 
listen to this no other being in creation can return love like a man or woman can like humankind can no animal no bird no fish no tree all of the things in creation all of the stars none of them were designed god didn't create them to return love to him but he created us to love him back that that's that this love is a mutual love this is a part of our purpose remember the purpose of this class the purpose of this teaching is for us to discover the purpose and power of a woman understanding female identity and a part of our female identity ladies is to love god and this is like the reason why it like blows my mind in a good way i should probably shouldn't use that term but the reason why this this overwhelms me is to think that god and all of his infinite wisdom you know the creator of the heavens and the earth the, the, he created the universe that when david said that who am i that you are mindful of me who who are we that he's so mindful of us that he, he you know we talked about how much he values us this this like brings it home that he values us so much that i just want to create them so they can love me back because i love them the bible says that he, we didn't love him first, but that he actually first loved us. So to think about that God created you just so that you can love him, to spend time with him, to worship him, to live your life in service towards him, to, to, uh, to, for him and to him, that's such a beautiful thing. And I'm like, wow, like to think, you know, many times in life, and y'all have my ladies on here, and to think about in life how you are pursuing a relationship you are pursuing different people. Hi, Ashley. Love you so much. Miss Renee, I'm, I'm just popping on here because I see the comments coming out of the corner. Um, yes, that's right. He did make us to love him. Ashley is saying that's powerful. Joanna, good afternoon. Welcome. Love you all too very much. Good afternoon. Um, Joy is saying earlier about the opinions. Your number one priority as a woman is to knowing our place in God. That's absolutely right. Hi, Miss Mary. Love you all so much. Do me a favor as you're popping on. Make sure that you love it, like it, and share it as we're moving on but lady I, I ladies i was so overwhelmed by this and i was thinking to myself that i was designed for the purpose of loving god and pastor john talked about love today and I'm, i didn't hear all of the teachings but i was just thinking to myself like this love god is love and we are made in his image so to think about how we're designed to spend time with him love him that that's one of our purposes that's one of our 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 um characteristics as being a woman like we are literally I'm, I'm saying this as as my own terminology but we are like love vessels love machines designed by god so that's why it's so instinctive for us especially as women to be very nurturing to be very loving you know to be very tender that's what even when you just when you look at the woman based on definition in the bible you can see that's a part of her characteristics not to say that men don't have it in fact, men are actually charged to love their wives. But I'm just talking about females right now, just based on design. And when you read out these characteristics, that we were made in the image of God. And one of the purposes is for us to love him. And what's so beautiful about this, let's look at this. And I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But turn with me, if you will, to Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 37. Matthew 22, verse number 37. Seven, And I'm reading from the NLT, and this is Jesus speaking to us. Say, this is Jesus speaking to me. You can type that and say, Jesus is talking to me, or, or whatever. Type love something. I'm just excited right now. Miss Karen is saying, no greater love. Yes, actually saying, love you. I love you. All the love is going around. I love it, ladies. Listen to this, what Jesus, what Jesus is saying. Jesus replied and said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind ladies this is the first and greatest commandment now you know we have the 10 commandments and he was if you go back and read this for the for the sake of time just to summarize it he was speaking to the pharisees and the sadducees who were so strict on the law the law of moses we don't need to do this you don't need to do that just all these rules and regulations that a lot of times what you may see in religion 
But Jesus comes and reminds us of what the greatest commandment is. He says, you must love the Lord your God, all my ladies out there, with all your heart, all your soul, and all of your mind. And what's so powerful about this is that God doesn't put things on us that we can't bear. I know we use that saying a lot, you know, God doesn't put anything on us that we can't bear. But what I was hearing from this is that God doesn't require this from us if he didn't know we, were, we weren't capable of doing it. God designed us, remember, he designed us for a purpose. He designed us with intent. And one of the things, the keys that we're focusing on in this teaching today is that we were designed to love God. That means that when Jesus comes and he tells us to love the Lord your God with all of your mind, your soul, and your heart, that means that God has placed something so beautiful on the inside of us that we are capable, ladies, of loving him with our heart, our soul, and our mind. And I know Pastor John, I love when he says that. He said, uh-oh, your mind. That means those thoughts. You got to love them even in your mind when you're trying to process things and figure things out. Even in your mind, we have to love him. And that means that we're not putting ourselves down in our thoughts. That means that we're not being over uh, anxious, overly anxious or anxious at all. Because the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Even with our mind, our soul, all of our being is the greatest commandment. That this is what one, uh, one of the things that is, is the one of the key focuses, if you will, of who we are as women is that we are to love God. So we know our place in God. We know that's number one. And if you could add this on number two is that we were designed to love God. Now, I would encourage you to go back and listen to what Pastor John taught this morning, because this love, you can say, well, yes, I love God. You know, I definitely love God. I go to church and I worship and I spend time with the Lord. But Jesus even went to explain further the ways that we demonstrate this love is how we love one another. How we respond to other people. How are we treating our, our husbands? How are we treating our children? How are we treating our fellow Chris, uh, uh, sisters in Christ? People in, people in general. The Bible says, how can you claim that you love me? You say, oh, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you with all my heart, my soul and my mind. But yet there's something that's in your heart towards somebody else, an offense. Something may have happened in your past that you're 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 having a hard time letting it go. But I know between what the Holy Ghost is teaching all of us. And, and I feel like it's funny. My husband uses this term sometimes how he's boxed you in. I feel like. He's boxing us in so that we can really grab a hold of this love. One thing I heard Pastor John say this morning, which was so powerful, he said one of the areas and one of the reasons why blessings may not be overflowing in your life is that we have to examine our love walk. So God is saying, ladies, I designed you to love me. Love me with all of your soul. Love me with all of your heart. Love me with all of your mind. I know you're capable of it because I'm the one who made you. That is what God's telling us. I know you can love that difficult, challenging coworker. I know you can, you know, honor your husband. I know you can love your children the way that I am calling you to. Again, we have to remember we're changing the way that we think according to Romans chapter 12, uh, verse number two. We're not pattern, patterning our lives uh, according to society and what we, we thought growing up and all of those different things because you leave it to the world They'll tell you love, love will make you do wrong. I, I know that that's a song. Love doesn't make you do wrong. I don't know what kind of love that is. Or sometimes I, I might be in the mall and I hear these songs about love. Love make me crazy or love make me do this. What kind of love are you talking about? Or love make me want to, it, it was something she was saying that I know it was not the Bible. I don't know what love this was. So we have to say, wow, God has designed me for this love. He created me to love and he's given me the ability to do so in such a beautiful way that all of what God is requiring of us is to love him. And we were made in his image. That's what it's saying in Matthew 22. So we have to keep that in our mind that number one, our number one purpose is to know God and then number two is to love him. So God created us to love us. We were created in the image of God 
we have the same nature like he does. So that means that we love like he does. And that, you know, that is definitely something that we're all growing into. But again, it's not something that is so unbearable that we can't do it. I know that as we continue to grab a hold of these teachings, as we continue to allow the Holy Ghost to reveal certain things to us, we have the capability, and I believe it's going to be exemplified more and more in our life, to love the way that God does. Think about that. That while we were yet sinners, Christ still loved us. That while we were before, while we were in our mother's womb being formed and created, God sent his son to die for us. This is the plan that he had. For, that's how much he loved us. He designed us to exchange this mutual love to him. And it's reflected not only spending time with him, those times at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning when he's nudging you to get up in the morning before prayer at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> or those times, Pastor John said this so powerfully, he said, the Holy Ghost, many times we, we think, is the Holy Ghost speaking to me? Is he speaking to me? You could be sitting, watching a movie or relaxing, and all of a sudden you get a flash of reading your Bible or desire to reading your, your, your Bible. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And I like to call it, I don't, you know, I like to call it like he's wooing you. Like a man, like wooing you. He's, he's, drawing he's you. say it again. He's drawing, drawing you. Yes, sir. He's drawing you. He's, he's saying, come spend time with me. And I was just so overwhelmed by that to think that, wow, like he loves me that much that he's wooing me into his presence. He's desiring me for me, for me to want to come and uh, spend time with him. And I was thinking to myself when I read this point in the book, I said, wow, uh, many times, and I'm going to wrap this up and bring it, start bringing this to a close. That's right, Miss Karen. And Miss Karen is saying the ability to love. Thank you, Lord. Adrian is saying we're designed to love. Cheyenne, thank you so much for posting that. Mommy is saying thank you, God. Um, Joy is saying, yes, the mind, Jesus. Um, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love God with your heart, your soul, and your mind. Miss Mary said, yes, that was so power, powerful. Walk in love. Thank you all for putting those notes down. I appreciate that. But as, as we're bringing this to a close and we're understanding who we are as a woman and our design as a woman, I was thinking to myself many times in a, in a love relationship, and, and, and I know this is not the case because all of our ladies that are desiring to be in a relationship in marriage, it is going to be mutual. This man is going to love you. He's going to care for you. He is going to do it the way everything is going to be the way God designed. But maybe you may have had stories in the past where the relationship was one sided, where you were always paying for food at the restaurant. You were the one with the car going to pick people up. You were the one always calling, trying to find you were the one doing all of the pursuing. It wasn't mutual. But in this particular story, I'm, I'm not story, forgive me, but in this particular key that we're talking about today, and that this is not one-sided, that when we come and we spend time with Jesus and we're reading the Bible and we're worship, worshiping him, it is a service unto him. But I'm realizing more and more that he enjoys this time with us just as much as we do. That this love that we were created for as women, yes, we talked about being a help meet, Yes, we've talked about offering solutions. Yes, we've talked about honoring our husbands, training our children. But today, ladies, we are talking about having a love relationship with the Lord. That one of our number one purposes, why God created us, is to love him in return because he loves us so much. So when you're spending time with Jesus, as I close, when you're spending time with him and you're reading the Bible, Think about this. Say, I'm not just doing this out of obligation as my duty. You know, I have to get up and read my Bible, but rather saying it's like, and, and Pastor John is here and can help me with this, but it's almost like you're going on a date. You know how ladies, well, you know, ladies, you get ready for your date. You're excited. You know, you're spending time. You exchange conversation. You talk. You enjoy one another's company. So the same thing applies when you're spending time with the Lord, because remember, when God created you, he created you with purpose. He created you with intent. He created you with intentionality. He wanted, he wanted something to come out of your life. And one of those things that he's desiring to come out of your life is to love him in return. So I just want to encourage you today as we're leaving and, and as you're going throughout your day, don't think about that God is mad at me. God is angry at me. You know, I'm just here trying to figure this whole thing out. And no, God is saying, ladies, I designed you in my image. 
I designed you and created you and given you the ability to love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. The Bible says here that this is the first and the greatest commandment. This is a commandment from the Lord. And that when you're spending time with him, that it's not just you just, just let me just work. Let me just pray. Let me just, oh, I got to hear from God. But rather, wow, let, Jesus, I'm here to spend time with you. Jesus, I'm just here to love on you today. I'm just here to experience your presence today and to spend time with you. Mm, that's how much he loves us. And I'm thinking to myself to think that God created everything and wants to spend time with me. It's so beautiful and so wonderful and so amazing. So I really pray that as we leave and we take away this second key today about that you were designed to love God and that it's a mutual love. Think about that. No other creation, nothing here on earth can love God the way that you can. And that's one of your purposes, knowing God. Knowing your place in God. Yes, we have a place. Yes, we are powerful women. Yes, we are strong. We're business owners. All of that. But at the, I won't even say at the end of the day. At the beginning of it all, back in creation, he designed us to worship him and to love him. And my prayer for you, for all of us, is that as we're spending time with the Lord, that we're not seeing it as, oblig um, as obligation. We're not seeing it as I have to and I must and if I don't. No, but rather I get to that. He, this is part of my purpose as a woman. This is part of my design as a woman. I get to spend time with the Lord. I get to read the word and allow him to re reveal his truths to me. And it's such a beautiful exchange because as you're reading your, the word, he's bring healing to your Bible. The body says he said the Bible says that his word is life to our body and healing to all of our flesh. You're looking for peace in your mind. He said, come learn of me. Learn of my ways, study my word, and I'll bring peace to your mind. You have questions about how to raise your children, how to train your children. You're not by yourself. The world will make you feel like that. Oh, girl, you're, you have to make that work by, your, by yourself. No, the Holy Ghost is with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You are not forsaken. You're not forgotten about. God is saying, come and spend time with me, and I'll show you how to raise your children. You have money. You know, when it comes to, to spending, I will teach you how to, to, to handle your money. All of this is a part of a beautiful, mutual, love-working relationship. And that is part of our being a woman today, ladies. So again, God loves you so much and you were created for this love. So I encourage you to go. And I just feel like the peace of God, even now, and his love is just like showering, showering me in this moment. It's very overwhelming and it feels amazing and I'm so grateful for this love that he thought about me enough just to create me as a part of that is to love him and to know my purpose in him and I believe that as you grab a hold of this teaching that you two are going to experience that love like never before that your time and devotion is going to go to a place that you've never experienced and that you are going to know this reality and not only are we going to receive this reality of his love but we're going to be able to take it out to people who otherwise don't know those challenging relationships, those those places where people have hurt you and all those different things. Allow the love of God to come and heal those places and allow it to be poured out on the life of somebody else in Jesus name. Amen. Ladies, I love you so much. I just wanted to come on here and share this point. We're going to continue on uh, knowing your purpose in God. And then, of course, today we talked about one of our designs is to love God. We'll probably continue on a little bit um, more on this tomorrow. So get ready for that. In the meantime, I want you to read um, Ephesians chapter three, or read Ephesians chapter three. If you we've read already Ephesians, but Ephesians chapter three, as we prepare for the teachings um, throughout the, the rest of the week. I did not forget page 53 of the question that I asked you. And at some point we may visit it. But it's again, when I put, gave you the question for homework, it wasn't even so much for you to just come up with an answer. Something that I want you to think about, something I want you to ponder on when it comes about the gifts and talents that God has given you. And are you using it to glorify his kingdom in Jesus name? Patria is putting a heart. Miss Renee is saying amen. Mommy is saying amen. Miss Michelle Ford is saying thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Erica saying, I was designed to love God. It is so true. Um, yes, and my man has have to have love like you and Pastor John has for you. Praise God, and he will in Jesus' name, Erica. 
Um, amen. I know your place in God. We are designed to love God. Oh, how he loves us. That's right, Joy. Oh, how he loves us. Beautiful song. Absolutely. Miss Carolyn saying, amen. Awesome, awesome. Ladies, love you so much. Thank you for being on today. Patria, I think I mentioned earlier, is a heart. So happy that you all joined today. Do me a favor as you're on. Make sure that you like the video. Make sure that you share it on both Facebook and um, YouTube. Get the word out that it was on today. Tag someone um, that a moment with the ladies was on today on a little bit earlier. Cheyenne saying amen. Love you all so, so very much. And before we go, just want to give you an opportunity to give. As you know, this Sunday we are getting geared up for uh, Easter Sunday. It's going to be a beautiful Sunday. We're giving Easter bags, uh, candy bags away to the children, gas cards. So many souls are going to be saved. It's going to be an amazing time. So make sure that you are a part of that um, financially. Um, also, you know, we have the crusade coming up um, in, in Mexico, as well as all of the other daily operations. We rent vans on Sundays. We fill the um, gas. You know, we give gas for the vans. We rent the venue, all of that. We have staff. So all of your finances are part of this. Remember Deuteronomy chapter 8 says, I'm the one who gives you the power to create wealth that you can take this wealth and establish my covenant here on the earth. And one of the ways that you do that is by taking what God has given you and say, God, what would you have me do to make sure that your covenant, your kingdom is being advanced through my financial giving today? So take a moment Ask the Lord what he would have you do to give today with a glad heart, knowing that God is such a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Adrian, thank you so much. He's putting the links on the screen over there as well on Facebook. Um, and also, if you can put this on YouTube as well. Um, and don't forget tonight, we are on for Kingdom Hour. Kingdom Hour is tonight. Kingdom Hour, Kingdom News at 730 with my husband and myself. We're going to have a great time. So come on at 7.30, gather everybody around. And then tomorrow, 5 a.m. prayer. Tomorrow's Thursday, yes. So 5 a.m. prayer tomorrow morning. And then we have uh, discipleship again with Pastor John at 10. And I'll be back on at 1 p.m. for a moment with the ladies. We do it again on this Friday, um, which happens to be Good Friday. I've been looking up the calendar, so it is Good Friday this Friday. This Friday is Communion Friday, so make sure that you're part of uh, prayer this um, Friday morning at 5 a.m. That's um, communion on Friday during prayer. And then, of course, we go through our normal um, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and then Friday night prayer. Saturday, we have soul winning at 12 p.m. in the area. And then Sunday morning, Sunday morning is Easter Sunday. We get to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Service time is at 9 a.m. on Sunday. So make sure um, everybody's there on time, 9 a.m., Okay, Adrian, awesome. So happy you and Leandre will be there. Cheyenne, looking forward to seeing you all tonight at 7.30. Love you all so much as we're giving today and as we close, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your love to us and how you created us to love and how you love us and we are going to love you back, God. You designed us for that. Thank you for revealing this wonderful truth to us, Father. And now, God, I thank you for those that are giving. I thank you, Lord, that you said in your word that you have given us the power to create wealth, made more wealth, more resources, more opportunities to continue to come into the hands of these precious ladies. And as they are continuing to increase financially, Father, that we will be so mindful not to forget your kingdom. We will be faithful in our tithes, faithful in our offerings, God, that your kingdom, your covenant may be established here on the earth. And God, we thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the miracles that are taking place in the lives of your people, whatever they're needing, whether it be contracts, housing, uh, bonuses, whatever it is, God, may it, may it come today, may it happen today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We love you so much and we thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, you know what we say in a moment with the lady, shout amen. Yell amen. Let the world know that Jesus is alive wherever you are in your house, shopping cart, wherever. <laughs> Let the world know that Jesus is so good to you. Ladies, love you so much. We'll see you tonight at 730 for Kingdom Hour. Don't forget you were designed by God to love him. It's a beautiful mutual relationship and he loves you so much. Pastor John and I love you, but don't forget God loves you more. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you on this evening. Love you all so much. Bye.